What's up, everybody? Welcome into another edition of SSPN Season Previews, Ethan. And today, we're going to talk about the man who led the team in scoring last year, mm. the man who will be the highest paid player on the mm. team this year in his first year of his $80 million contract, Kelton Johnson. KJ3, baby. Love him. Maybe the highest play... Get, or, uh, butchered that. What I was going to say... Maybe the highest paid player on the team, Ethan, but mm-hmm. it seems like he's also the guy who gets the highest amount of hate on Spurs Twitter. That's for sure. But we're going to start off and, and give the whole full breakdown on Keldon like we have on the other videos. But we're going to start off with the strengths, yes. you know, <laughs> because the negative usually gets amplified whenever it comes to Keldon and Spurs fans. So, Ethan, I'm going to dish it to you on this one. Tell me just the things that you have uh, as Keldon's strengths going into this season. Biggest strength? His intangibles. I know we were just joking about saying intangibles prior to the show, but what he brings to the team as a leader, as a vocal leader, and with his play on the on the court, um, it's incredibly valuable, something you can't measure. He was and is the heart of the team, in my eyes. I don't care if, you know, Wemby might be, you know, the number one player, the franchise moving forward, but Keldon Johnson, kind of like how Draymond Green is for the Warriors, will be the motor for the San Antonio Spurs. He plays with such aggression, and this is also part of his strengths. His finishing around the rim, the way he yells, creates con- contact, gets the fans involved in the game, um, that's, to me, his biggest strength. And, and from a basketball perspective, um, I think we can expect a higher efficiency as far as shooting the ball. I think he, especially with Wemby back, Devin back, um, uh, finishing at the rim, uh, creating for others kind of became one of his bigger strengths toward the end of last season because of just the nature of the team. He right. had the ball, the in attention his hand. he drew. He had to create for others as part, like as a necessity, more than like a skill. But that became something that we can expect from him moving forward. Um, so yeah, I mean, love Kelvin Johnson. Yeah, just just some other things that I had written down. Um, the first thing I wrote down was strength and matchups. And that was really amplified last yes. year with his move to small forward in the two instead of having to play the four. Now he can actually use his strength, you know, driving to the rim, which is, I mean, that's been his favorite thing to do since he was a rookie, Kelvin. And he came in just doing that and people weren't expecting it. Hence the nickname, big body, everything. Yes. So now that he's actually playing the position he's supposed to be, his strength has turned into a strength, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Um, and because of his strength, he draws fouls a lot. Um, you know, he's able to get his shoulders into guys. Um, and, and I think him getting to the foul line last year, you know, and being, despite the shooting inconsistencies, which we'll get into a little bit later in the video, um, he was a consistent three point or free throw shooter this year. I f- forget exactly what the percentage is, but still, the point I'm trying to make on this is that him getting to the line this past season was a big reason why he was able to get up to 22 points a game. Um, I'm looking up that statistic. So, you know, last season, 74.9. So not perfect, definitely still some room for improvement, but the fact that he was a 75% three, uh, free throw shooter, one, I think has to do with he was taking a little bit more, which is why the percentage is where it's at. Um, but two, still it shows the potential that he has moving forward. When I look back on this season, I mean, I I can see that he's a 75% because of the increased volume in free throws. And also because I do remember a miss here and there, but really I remember him as a solid free throw shooter, which is (laughs) why I brought up this point is once again, getting to the foul foul line has has helped his scoring ability as well. The other things I had written down is kind of what you talked about. The, Um, stuff that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. He's an energy plug. He was the unquestioned leader of the team last year, leading the huddles. You know, me and you have talked about, we feel like Devin Vassell has a little bit higher potential, but when it came to the leader of the team, who was leading the huddles, who was really taking charge in in the fourth quarter, most of the games, obviously in in the 40 games Devin played, he had some fourth quarter moments as well. But throughout the majority of the season, that guy was Keldon Johnson. Um, And he turned into a 20 plus point per game guy, which is really what we wanted to see if he could be that last season. I know the circumstances have a lot to do with it, but he proved that he did have that ability, which was something that we thought he had, but you know, weren't entirely sure of going into the season because we hadn't seen it before. And the last thing I want to say about Keldon um, that I think really goes underlooked whenever we talk about him, especially when it comes to the play style of this team moving forward, is that he excels in transition. Mm. Um, his body type, his speed for his body type, um, 
and and just you know his strengths offensively in his play style you know it's posters it's using that shoulder with the momentum and force you know at the rim um and, and of course playmaking a little bit in transition as well with the attention he drew this past season that's such a huge point. I cannot believe I forgot to say that. Transition game is Keldon Johnson's strength and honestly will be the biggest strength of the team next year as well. Yeah, you know, and I felt the same way, dude, when I was writing down my notes for this episode and then I was like, wait, I forgot about transition. Yeah, and it's almost so like that's kind of the reason why when you look at the modern of the NBA moving forward, um, it's not the only reason, but because he excels in in transition, you know, that's a big reason I think why the Spurs gave him the contract he did because they know that on top of all of his potential and every uh, and all his other skills that can continue to grow, his play style is fit for, you know, the the future of the of the league. Most definitely. And it this is sort of off topic but kind of on topic because we're talking about his transition skills and I was watching some old games last week and it was old school thunder like 2012 thunder. And Russell Westbrook in transition and the aggression <laughs> that he takes his, himself to the rim reminds me a lot of Keldon Johnson. And the way he screams after dunks, too. So many similarities there. I know you said, Keldon said, that Russell was his favorite player growing yep. up. So that is very evident if you go back and watch old school Russ. I'm not talking about current Russ. Old school Russ. Exactly. And that's and that's the guy that, you know, KJ was growing up on because he's yep. around our age. Yep. So, you know, he remembers that Westbrook, you know, the all-star Westbrook, triple-double Westbrook. Um you know, not um, no disrespect when I say this, but now he is unfortunately referred to a lot as West Brick. So unfortunately, we mm-hmm. you know Kel- Keldon's referring to West Brook. It's a key mm-hmm. there. Correct. Uh, you know, I just want to pick your brain on the free throw thr- free throw shooting thing. Kind of, what are your thoughts on, on the percentage being where it's at? I need to go look at where it was before. I think it might have dropped, but I feel like there was an increase in free throws this year from him. Correct. Yeah, I mean, holistically, yeah. 75% is still like a really right. solid spot to be in, especially for a small forward. Like, I'm not worried about him going to the line at all. In no way was he a, um, like a, I wasn't nervous when he went to the line. If he missed both, it was surprising. For context, it stayed about the same. Um, I'm trying to figure out, but okay, but here, okay. I, I was exactly right. My thoughts, Ethan, you know, sometimes people want to talk about stats and a lot of times on the show, we talk about how we, we remember the tape and we put an emphasis on that. The reason I do that is is because of this and the emphasis that I had in my brain, Ethan, even though I didn't know the exact stats, my, my suspicions were correct. He, this was the highest amount of free throws he made throughout his career mm-hmm. at four. Um, but it was also a jump. He had two more free throws than he had last season. Last year, he had 3.1. This year, he had 5.2. So staying at around the same amount and making, it was about two and a half before and, you know, getting about a three, a free throw and a half more per game. You know, you see what I'm saying? The yeah. point earlier, the percentage was really, even though it's a little bit lower, when you factor in the increase in shots, it was mm-hmm. basically the same. So love yeah. to see that from Keldon, especially this season. Um, and it ties into his frame as well. But with that being said, Ethan, we still got to talk about some things we want to see Keldon improve on going into this season. W- what are the things that stand out in your mind? Ball handling and shot creation for himself in the mid-range, just increasing his consistency. I think his three-point ball, while there were some inefficient moments last year and that did kind of you know dip off, especially as the season progressed, I really think that stemmed from the lack of Devin Vassell, from at times lack of Trey Jones, Jeremy Sohan was out for yep. a period of time and he became so reliant on that shot because there was really no other options for him. They were walling up kind of like how they did to Giannis in the playoffs because they knew that was his biggest strength. And when you're not surrounded by talent that can also draw two, your numbers are just going to drop. And I, I wish I had these advanced stats in front of me because I wonder right. how much like one, two dribble pull-ups coming off of screens, that sort of thing. I wonder how many of those three-point shots increased. Because back when he was simply a catch-and-shoot guy, he was like, what, 45%? Like, this right. is one of the best shooters of all time. Suddenly, he's having to shoot off the dribble, <laughs> and it's like, oh, God. He's that really is shooter. what it felt like, not like, to really? interrupt you, but the, he's one of the greatest shooters of all time. That's how it felt was, at the beginning of the year in comparison right, really? to the rest. It, uh, you, exactly. He, catch and shoot, 45%. Great shooter. Love him. He's one of the best catch and shoot guys in the league. And then all of a sudden, everyone is like, he can barely shoot. He can't throw a rock into the ocean. It's like, okay, let's let's pull back a little bit. I think those numbers will come back up. Uh, but as far as creating a shot for himself, working on his ball handling skills, 
that will just open up everything for him. Because I think he has solid patience. I think he has solid footwork. We see that when he gets to the rim because he's so aggressive, and that probably led to increased free throw shooting. So if he can kind of move that skill set into the mid-range coming off of screens, it, it opens up everything else for him. Yeah, uh, I completely agree. I really liked your point on that, um, the shooting point specifically, because when you add Wembenyama and also just a full season of Devin Vassell, a full mm-hmm. season of Jeremy Sohan, you know, et cetera, et cetera, when it's not a tank, like a full tank season anymore, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, I think that's going to just naturally help his shooting. As we've, we've mentioned that um, before when we're just talking about Wembenyama, but I think also when you factor in the missed games from the rest of the roster, you know, we tend to forget about that. So, just more talent, like so much more talent around him will naturally help his shooting. I think that's a great point. And that was the first thing I had written down was just consistency in shooting. I think he proved to us, people may say I'm crazy, but I think he proved to us in the beginning of this season that he can be that guy. But Mm -hmm. is he always going to be in that situation? And also throughout a season, teams are going to adjust and realize that, you know, so he had to learn some things. He's going to have to learn how to be consistent throughout all the changes in scheme throughout the season. Um, And also just in a little bit of a new role. Obviously, it won't be as different as some of the other guys. But when you bring in Wembenyama, everybody's going to role is going to shift just a little bit. Um, And, you know, my other thing that I had offensively was kind of the same thing you did. I just said consistency off the dribble in the mid range. Um, You know, we saw a little bit of that this past season. And while it may not be, you know, they weren't always the prettiest moves. We saw some like things that he added to his mid range bag, you know, which is what we want to see, you know. And when you think about Keldon's frame, it kind of makes sense that he's not going to look like Devin, (laughs) you know, with the floaters. You know what I'm saying? He's just he's too jacked for that, (laughs) you know. Um, so anyways, I would just like to see him, like you said, if he can get that ball handling down, that's another key thing I forgot to write down. You know, the last one we talked about transition being something you forgot. I forgot ball handling on this one. I think that would, like you said, it would open up the rest of his game completely on top of just getting consistent with some of those mid range moves, because we know how he is as a catch and shoot guy and attacking the rim. And then the last thing is defense. This is what everybody, a lot of people talk about. I don't really use last season as an example because really, um, I mean, when you factor in the context of the team, but also like, I just didn't see it as everybody else on the internet seemed to see it. I kind of still felt like he took a slight improvement. Um, Mm -hmm. But the main thing I just want him to do when you have that contract, right? Level up and become a solid on ball defender and, and read cuts better when you're off ball and know when to help. Those are the things when I look at my mind, like when I go into my my tape memory, like I was just referencing Ethan, like what do I think of what pops into my mind when I think of Keldon's defense? I think of him being a little bit better at putting his hands up and using his strength and fouling a little bit less than he has in the past still sometimes. But the main thing is just becoming that solid on ball defender. And and I've seen him sometimes fall asleep on cuts as well. Mm -hmm. Those were the things that kind of poked in my mind. But dude, as I've mentioned in other episodes, like as much as some people be like, it's already a proven fact that Kelvin's got awful on defense. It's like to me, I'm like, okay. Nah, he's 23 on the Spurs. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I really am not that worried about his defense. I mean, maybe that's crazy and maybe no, that's you're not me wrong. being a homer, but I just believe in, in Pop making him a good defender because I see potential there. Half a defense is team communication, right? you got the guy behind you and having trust in him year. to tell you where to go. Yeah, there was no consistency with the rotation. Guys are being brought in at random we were bringing guys off the trash heap that became rotation rotational players for us bassy champagne just to name a couple so obviously there's going to be miscommunications could he improve individually sure sure Absolutely. there's always room for improvement but i agree with you there was not a glaring it didn't it wasn't glaring to me he wasn't like significantly worse than anybody else really like Mm-mm. devin's a great defender sure trey's like solid but like it wasn't it wasn't that bad and the other thing, you know, that we've talked about this numerous times, Ethan, and, and I haven't even mentioned this. It's like a light bulb just went off. Also, he was transitioning who he was guarding. True. Like, yes, he's going to get beat, like, as not trying to make excuses, still needs to get better. But it's natural for him to get beat off the dribble a little bit more when he's used to matching up against fours. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and sure. that's why I said I wanted to improve him, see him improve as an off, on-ball defender. It's a reasonable thing. It's a reasonable thing on both sides, especially as we mention at nauseum on this channel when you factor in the context of last year's team. 
Correct. All right. I'll, I'll read my overall thoughts, Ethan, that I wrote down here, and then I'll dish it to you and we'll wrap this thing up. So I said, <laughs> this is how I opened it up. As I've said numerous times, KJ gets way too much hate. He was the team's unquestioned leader on and off the court last season in huddles, fourth quarters, etc. And he proved he could be a 20-plus point-per-game guy and consistently showed up in the fourth quarter despite last year's circumstances. He's acknowledged his defense was his focus this offseason, but it really wasn't as bad as Spurs Twitter sometimes makes it out to be. Entering the first year of his $80 million extension while adding Wemby to the roster, it's the perfect storm for Keldon to prove the doubters wrong and show the value of that contract. Kind of similar to Devin. Very much so. And I will echo everything that you said. And the only thing that I will add for Keldon is this is officially his first year for me, at least, for no excuses. You know, he, he will no longer have the, but he's young, he's learning excuse. We have a full squad. I know we're not playoff bound, obviously, but like we have a, we have a squad, we have a franchise player, we have a plan moving forward with the greatest coach of all time. You've been in the system for a couple of years. You averaged 22 last year. You have to show out this year. You're getting paid $20 million. That contract's kicking in. Agreed. You, you know, very similar to Devin, like we said, kind of those excuses out the window. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button below if you enjoyed today's content. And if you're excited for the Spurs season, if you want to stay up to date with all of our content, be sure to follow us on Twitter at SSPN on YT, at Jude McLaren, and at Ethan underscore Quintero. We appreciate you guys. We'll catch you on the next one. See y'all later.